behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Good afternoon, and welcome to St. Andrew's Parish for today's Mass, um, the vigil for the fifth Sunday of Easter. Please stand. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In today's first reading, Paul and Barnabas, they're going to town to town, village to village, proclaiming about the risen Christ. And today's second reading tells us, when God comes, he's going to renew the face of the earth, and everything will be new earth and new heaven. And the gospel in tells, love one another as I have loved you. I do not know how much you love your family. I do not know how much you love your neighbors. I do not know how much you love God, but we all loved by God so much unconditionally. As God this afternoon, let's recall the sins that we have committed and ask pardon and forgiveness. Of a living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mysteries within us, that those who are pleased to make new in holy baptism may, under your protective care, bear much fruit and to come to the joys of life eternal. So, Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Paul and Barnabas had proclaimed the good news to that city and made a considerable number of disciples, they returned to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch. They strengthened the spirits of the disciples and exhorted them to persevere in the faith, saying, it is necessary 
for us to undergo many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. They appointed elders for them in each church and with prayer and fasting commended them to the Lord in whom they had put their faith. Then they traveled through Pisidia and reached Pamphylia. After proclaiming the word at Perga, they went down to Italia. From there they sailed to Antioch, where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work they had now accomplished. And when they arrived, they called the church together and reported what God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. The word of the Lord. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to reading from the book of Revelation. Then I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. The former heaven and the former earth had passed away and the sea was no more. I also saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, God's dwelling is with the human race. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people. And God himself will always be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there shall be no more death or mourning, wailing or pain, for the old order has passed away. The one who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When Judas had left them, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself. And God will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little while longer. I give you a new commandment, love one another. As I have loved you, so you also should love one another. This is how all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. How are you this afternoon? Are you happy to be here in the house of the Lord today? Let someone shout, Amen. Amen. Oh, wonderful. That is a spirit we would like to see, right? And one day, Mother Teresa and other sisters, they are going to do their mission work. While they are waiting for the train in the train station, they saw an old man, a leper, lying down near the staircase. Thousand people are passing by, but nobody went up to him and asking if he was okay or if he needs anything. Then after a couple of minutes, Mother Teresa went there. The man was smelling. He doesn't have proper clothes. And they do not know when was the last time he had a bath, he had a food to eat. Without any hesitation, mother grabbed him, embraced him, and took him to our house and started cleaning him. It almost took for them three days, it seems, to give a beautiful haircut and bath and clean all the wounds. He was in a, a desperate situation. And he turned to Mother Teresa and said, Mother, I do not know if God really exists. I never believed in angels and saints. But looking at you, I can say that there is a God. Looking at you, I can tell there are angels and the saints. Maybe you were sent by God to help me. I thought that I'm going to die here as an animal without any dignity, without any love, respect. But you came and you brought me to your house. You gave me bath, gave me clothes, and gave me the love. Thank you so much. If I die today, mother, if I go and see God the Father in his kingdom, I will tell, take care of Mother Teresa. We need so many Mother Teresa's in Kolkata to take care of so many leprosy patients, so many street children, and so many people, those who are living in the streets. Even though Mother tried her best to keep him alive, but after three, three days, he passed away. And she shared so much of love to him. Sometimes we always look for love. Where can I get it? How can I get it? How can I share? How can I receive? God gives us so many opportunities. You need not to go to India or Kolkata. You need not to do what Mother Lisa did. But God gives a beautiful, beautiful opportunities within our own families, within our own neighborhood, within our own communities, within our own churches. And so many times we don't look for those little opportunities that God is giving so that we can share God's love with one another, with whom you are living, with whom you are working. That's why St. Paul and Barnabas, all the apostles, they went to town to town, village to village. When they received the love of God, they don't want to keep that love with them. That's why they are going everywhere and spreading the kingdom of God and spreading the love of God. And St. Paul says in the first reading today, it is necessary for us to undergo the hardships in order to enter into the kingdom of God. And we have so many hardships in our lives. And God gives hardships, tough times in our lives, not to destroy us, but to make us stronger and stronger so that we can believe in God and enter into the kingdom of God. When he was a soul, 
he was killing everybody those who are following Christ after the conversion when he became a Paul and he embraced the one commandment that commandment is we heard in the scripture love one another as I have loved you and today's second reading talks about the new heaven and new earth I don't believe there's a new heaven new earth up there but I believe in here it all depends on us how you want to make this earth a lovable place this earth a new place the moment we start loving one another the moment we respect one another the moment we help one another you are going to experience the new heaven a new earth here on this earth and God was not able to be everywhere that's why he created you and I so that we can spread the love of himself with the people with whom we are working with whom we are living and God promises in this uh, gospel reading love one another as I have loved you if you do that and I will be with you no matter what you know I always say these beautiful stories because I work in Charlton Memorial Hospital as a chaplain my job is every day I go to the hospital visit so many patients those are in desperate situation those who are angry and joyful and those who give up on their lives and wait to die in the hospital but whenever I go there they always cry out about one thing father I did not have any visitors I have been here almost one week nobody came to visit me what about your family not even my family father what about your parishioners not even a parishioners father maybe they do not know I am in the hospital but you made my day and thank you so much for your presence all the time no matter what and one day I met this wonderful wonderful man he was amputated two legs problem with the hearts heart he has a cancer and he is fighting for his life but he was so joyful then he said father God has given me these tough times so that I can become humble and simple share this love of God with other people in a positive way but I'm not afraid to go to heaven Lord heaven father if God is gonna call me today because he loves me so much that's why he's giving me a life to live on until today I don't care if my family comes if my neighbor comes if my parishioners comes but God is with me all the time no matter what and nobody can take away his presence from me father and there was so much of joy and happiness in his heart and his face you know sharing all the stories then I was asking one question from where this man gets all this positivity he doesn't have any negativity in his life always praising God even though God has taken his two legs and God has given problem in his heart and cancer and all other things sometimes we see love through the suffering the same thing happened to mother Mary mother Mary had only one begotten son which is our Lord Jesus Christ she knew that he's gonna die for all of us on the cross but still she said let him go and die for the people and people can get, receive the salvation and redemption if your love is pure and they will be a sacrifice but whenever is God is asking to do some kind of sacrifices do not hesitate ask God give me some more strength Lord so that we can do it with your help with your courage and your love and one uh, one of the patients were asking mother Teresa mother what do we have to do in order to spread the love of God and she said you go home and love your family as I said in the beginning we always look for the chance to love someone but you forget those who are with us as mother Teresa said whenever you go home we should love our own family our own brothers and our own sisters without any conditions because God's love has no conditions at all when somebody says I love you then we always expect something from them but when God says I love you he doesn't accept anything whether you love him or not but still he loves us that's why St. Paul says it is not I who lives but the Christ is the one who lives in me but whenever you are loving keeping that one commandment love one another as I have loved you which means you are not the one who's living on this earth but the Christ is the one 
living in you and motivating you, inspiring you, and telling you, telling you to do something great that God is asking us to do in our day-to-day -day lives. But today, as we go home, let us forget all our anger, all our hurt feelings, and our brokenness, and embrace one another, and fulfill the commandment that Jesus has given to us, that one very, very simple commandment, love one another as I have loved you. Amen. Please rise to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. Life from life, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstance with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified and upon just Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He has sent into the heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to church the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My brothers and sisters, God, this evening, let us recall all the graces and blessings and prayers and petitions and offer to God he may hear us and answer us. For the church throughout the world, May the Lord guide her and bestow upon her all heavenly graces. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. For our elected leaders, may God help them in serving with selfless wisdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For those who are suffering today, may the Lord's promise to make all things new give them strength and hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For this community of believers, may God's grace help us, help us love always as we should. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who have died, may they soon be welcomed into the presence of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear, our prayer. Lord hear our prayer. And for today's Mass intention, Joachim Jack Kamara and family, and Jose and Beatriz Pimentel and family. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of Father, we thank you and pray to praise you for listening to these wonderful prayers and grant us according to your holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Mm.
Prayers and sisters, my sacrifice and yours may be accepted to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant we pray that as we come to the know your truth, we may make it ours by the worthy of our lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is really right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to love you more graciously. When Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, he never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us, ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with the paschal joy, every land, every people, every family, exalts in your praises, even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the ending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and his saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, and the saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks to held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis of Pope, Edgar de Cunha, our bishop, clergy, and all the faithful. Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints, you are pleased here throughout the ages. We may merit to be co eternal life, and may praise you and glorify you through your Son, 
Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the serious command and a form of the given teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, said your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace, peace. Peace, Donna. Peace, Brian. Of God, behold him, he takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Well, let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord. Lead those who are imbued with your heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to the newness of our lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you and your families, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth to the masses ended. Amen.